so much. Nikki is my administrative assistant, uh, executive support coordinator, and she's amazing and is in the background and did all of our technology for us tonight. So I'm going to thank her right up front just so I don't forget because it's really important. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our Arts and Culture Candidate Forum for D51 School Board Candidates. This event is being brought to you in partnership with the Grand Valley Creative Alliance, the Art Center, the Avalon Theater Foundation, the Grand Junction Symphony Orchestra, the Museum of Western Colorado, and Mesa County Libraries. Tonight's questions have come from all of these groups. We have all candidates with us this evening. Thank you so much for everyone for joining and to our candidates for being with us. I am Michelle Boisvenue Fox, Library Director at Mesa County Libraries, and I will be the facilitator tonight. Our candidates are in alphabetical order because I am a librarian. Nick Allen, David Combs, Austin DeWitt, Andrea Hates, Will Jones, Angela Lima, and Trish Mayer. And I apologize if I've mispronounced anybody's name, but I do come from Dutch name country in Michigan, so hopefully I'm close on most of them. For our purposes today, the arts for K through 12 students include music, choir, drama, and visual arts. We have four questions today, and we'll have time for final words from candidates at the end. I will mix up the order candidates are asked questions. If each candidate can keep comments to three minutes each, it will help us get through the questions and ensure that all candidates have a chance to speak. This forum is focused on arts and culture, so the questions will be on that topic. Hopefully you aren't surprised by that. All right, let's get started. The first question, a variety of educators and studies indicate that an arts education helps students with development of motor skills, language skills, social skills, decision-making, risk-taking, and inventiveness, along with connecting them to cultures and the wider world. What was your experience with the arts as a student? And we'll start with David. It's uh, very ironic that you asked that question because uh, my, my experience with the art started very early in life in that as a, uh, as a kindergartner, I learned how to draw. And what that did is it enabled me to expand my horizons. And the reason why I say that is uh, I grew up in the projects in Minneapolis. And in, in the projects, you're somewhat limited in terms of a very limited culture, a very limited outlook on life. And, and, and what, what drawing did is it allowed me to, to literally expand my, my cranial horizon. What I mean by that, it, it, it allowed me to expand my vision in terms of what was out there, what I thought was out there and I was able to uh, put it on paper. Um, I think arts are very important because it, it, it creates individuality. It, it, it provides an individual with an outlet and you, you can't be quote unquote corrected because art is individual. Um, my, my next exploration into the arts was actually music where I, I played a trombone. I wanted to start out playing a, uh, a saxophone, but it had already been taken up. And so I played a trombone in, uh, in middle school. And what it enabled me to do was realize that there was, a, uh, there was something over the horizon. And I think that's what a lot of students need. It, it, it has to go beyond the, uh, the, the three R's, the reading, writing, and arithmetic. And I think what that does is it, it builds character. And to kind of give you a side note, uh, I come from a family of eight. And one of the things that our parents did, uh, there were four boys, uh, four girls. One of the things our parents did, they purchased a drum set and a guitar. And uh, my sisters are really good drummers. Uh, I became a guitarist. And this is kind of my claim to fame. I end up playing in a band, in a garage band with Prince. Uh, my friends were uh, Morris Day and uh, Jimmy Johnson. And what that did is it, it allowed me to say, there are individuals that I grew up with and it was because of the arts that made them successful. It's because they had the opportunity or we all had the, the opportunity to have something that was placed in front of us. And typically you don't see instruments 
in low income housing. Uh, and it's simply because of the cost involved. And so I, I, I give a lot of credence to the arts simply because of what they can bring to a student's life. Uh, I'm all for the arts and whether it be written arts, uh, musical arts or uh, acting arts. I, I'm just, I feel without art, uh, schools wouldn't be as successful as they are because not all kids fit into academics uh, and they will, they will, they will really, I mean, you talk about reach for the stars. If there is anything that assists kids in reaching for the stars, it's the arts and culture. Wonderful. Thank you, David. Austin, you are next. What was your experience with the arts as a student? Um, as a student, I took music. Um, I did theater in high school and obviously art one. I didn't go beyond art one because I couldn't pick up the basic skills because I'm extremely uncoordinated. Um, but I did music in middle school and that involved choir and middle school band. Um, and, and like David, I did play trombone and trumpet for about three weeks. And then <laughs> I switched from back over to trumpet. Um, and then in high school, I helped out with uh, theater tech behind the scenes, as well as um, play production, which is, you know, building sets for the plays. Um, and, and I did that at Fruita Monument, and that was phenomenal because it teaches um, it teaches skills that not aren't necessarily taught in a classroom, you know, how to use a hammer, how to use a drill. And it's kind of like home mech, and I think and, in a way that helps kids because it's more of a class that they can come in and, you know, just kind of relax and build things all day and not have to worry about, um, you know, looking at a screen all, all, you know, for a couple of hours. And I definitely think that, um, you know, that it plays a huge role because obviously it, it fundamentally helps kids with motor skills as well. Um, and, and, and that aspect, I think, helps develop the brain a little bit better than, you know, just sitting staring at a screen trying to solve math problems all day or ELA problems or, you know, whatever the problem may be. Um, and, and so with music, it definitely helped me uh, reading um, actually, because it, it taught me how to lead, um, read faster and in order and left to right with, and, and, you know, understand kind of under, it helped me with understanding the types. Um, so that was definitely my experience with arts in, in middle and high school. Wonderful. Thank you, Austin. Andrea, you're next. All right. Thank you. Andrea Heights here. Thanks for having us tonight. So um, I started playing the violin in fifth grade, and um, that was a really neat experience. And then I, I actually still continue to play today. Uh, not nearly on the level as I did in school. Um, I was a part of uh, different chamber orchestras throughout middle school and high school. Um, we would play um, well for different plays at school and things as well. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the arts. Um, I really gravitated to art class, um, won a couple of different awards um, with some abstract art, uh, which kind of propelled me um, on, and I know this is going to sound totally funny because Bob Ross is such this uh, TikTok phenomenon now, but my parents literally bought me a Bob Ross um, kind of kit. And so I ended up doing that in middle school and high school and had happy trees and all of that. So um, honestly, but it was just really fun. They, they saw that I had something that um, I really liked doing and they let me explore that and I had a ton of fun with it. So I think my aunt actually still has one of my paintings in her house. So um, so I just think it's great for kids to explore that. Um, obviously, when I was in high school, we didn't have nearly as much technology. And so I feel like arts and music and uh, the theater is really important for kids to realize that there's a lot more creativity out there than just what's behind a screen or what's in a screen, so to speak. So um, I think that gets our brains working. Um, I know studies show that um, being able to play an instrument, an instrument can actually help with math skills. And so, um, and like Austin said, it obviously helped him with reading. And so, I, and I know not every kid is, you know, musically inclined or artistically inclined, but I think sometimes it's just fun to try it and just see what you might like. Um, I'm honestly super impressed by um, 
honestly, some of the spray paint artists that I see, there's no way I don't even feel like I could do things like that with a, a spray paint can. But so there's, there's all different kinds of art that propelled me um, that just even about five or six years ago, I did a, uh, a, a study course with Sarah Oakley, who was a, a artist locally here in town who had a gallery and it just kind of continued to propel me through my life. So I, I really um, think fondly of my time in elementary and middle school and high school of my arts and music, um, because it's definitely stuck with me uh, throughout my adult life. Great. Thanks, Andrea. Will, you're next. What was your experience with the arts as a student? Uh, good evening. How are you tonight? Uh, so my experience started, you know, when I was young, too. Um, I loved art class. I loved doing things with art. You know, we're not, we, I grew up not so not so rich, you know, in, uh, in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and we really couldn't afford video games. So we used to draw a lot. So we would draw little things and draw little plays up, and we would draw, you know, just, just simple, you know, just the things we saw, you know, apples, oranges, uh, you know, different plants. We try and draw people. We would, you know, we'd have a field day with it and just, you know, whoever had the better ones, we have our own little, uh, little, little. Breaking up a little bit, Well, Are we there? We're here. I can hear you again. All right. There we are. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, and then, you know, that continued on when I was in junior high and high school, I was in choir and I loved choir. It was one of my most favorite classes I've ever did. So it, it taught me how to express myself and not be so shy around people and, and use my voice and, and do different things like that. So it led to speech and debate class. And uh, I did a lot of, you know, some arts or art classes and some more, uh, you know, theater classes and got to be in a couple plays and, you know, be the lead guy and all that fun stuff. So it taught you to be yourself and, and come out and, and express yourself. And I think art does that for people. It teaches kids how to be not so quiet and express themselves in ways that they've never expressed themselves before, you know, to use their brains and, you know, just use their words a lot better and be able to pronunciate things and feel more comfortable. And so I think art does that for a lot of people. And I think that's important. You know, we use math, reading, you know, you use all those things when you're doing those things, you know, especially in art, you know, drawing different things, graphing and and uh, drawing different buildings and things like that. So I think that it just, it, it does those things and experiences. It just helps you to come out, come out and, and be yourself. Wonderful. Thank you, Will. Angela, you're next. Hi, everybody. Thanks again for having us this evening. Um, wow, it's been a long time since I was in high school and doing all of these things that brought back some, some really great memories. I did, I think, everything that was artistic. And, you know, like a lot of kids, I think it helps keep you engaged because you're you're spending at least part of your time doing something that you really love. It allows you to express your creativity. Um, and, you know, as much as it helps and helped me figure out who I was as a person and what I love to do uh, and maybe some some hidden talents and then some things that I didn't end up being so great at, um, it gave me a connectivity to uh, a, a larger community of kids that were also into that. And then maybe, you you know, you bring in some kids into that culture that hadn't otherwise thought about it because they didn't grow up with it in their homes. I come from a very artistic family. Um, my mother's family were all musicians and my dad's a landscape painter. So, you know, I was, it was always around our home, but it was fun to see the kids that didn't otherwise have an opportunity to participate in those kinds of things, to be able to come in and have that sense of community um, and that sense of accomplishment, expression, all of those things. Um, I think it's just an absolutely uh, vital part of the school experience that kids get a chance to do that. It opens their mind. It, it allows them to learn so many other things besides just the art that they're doing. So I, I, I don't know if, if I would have enjoyed high school nearly as much without all of those things. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Angela. Trish, you're next. Thank you, well, first of all, thank you for hosting us tonight. It sounds like uh, these topics make all of us happy and have good memories for all of us who are speaking about it. Um, as a little kid going to P Pomona Elementary, the school district actually offered band back in the day in elementary school. So I started on the French horn French horn at Pomona Elementary in fifth and sixth grade, um, and then transferred to playing flute. Um, amazingly enough, I must have been so happy 
and had such great confidence that I somehow became a baton twirler for the middle school marching band. And I cannot believe anybody let me do that, but that <laughs> apparently happened. Um, I then went on to be in the marching band in high school. So music was uh, all of my brothers and sisters and I were all participating in band from the time we were in elementary school on. Um, somehow we have raised our own children with the arts in mind too. Uh, both of my kids have been in orchestra, choir, and theater um, from the time they were little kids up actually through college and uh, their, ma their uh, master's programs. Um, both of my kids have gone on to study. One is in engineering and doing some side studying for jazz piano. One studied political science with a second major in theater and is coming home from law school over Christmas to sing with High Desert Opera, which will be just great. Um, I'm hugely supportive of the arts. Um, I also grew up as a kid. Uh, my mom was on the community concerts of the Grand Valley Board. So from the time I was a wee little one, we used to go to Grand Junction High School that has a packed auditorium even now for community concerts um, and would go home at intermission to get to bed in time. Um, so I was raised in a background where my parents uh, took us to theater. We grew up going to Colorado uh, Mesa State Theater at that time. Um, I've raised my own kids in that same way. Um, we've had a great time watching our kids grow up with music as well. Uh, our younger one has been in orchestra, orchestra from the time he was middle school up, now studying jazz piano as well. Um, our older one, uh, we had the opportunity to watch him on stage at Colorado Mesa University. Um, and, you know, recently we were asked by CMU to provide parent testimonial for some marketing they're doing on what is it like to be a parent who's supporting a child pursuing the arts. And we were so thrilled um, and honored to even be asked to do that. And when you're a parent and your kid is on stage, whether they're playing viola, whether they're singing, whether they're performing on stage, there's nothing better than that. Um, so I'm a, a great believer in the arts. I think uh, when I talked to my older child about what theater brought him, it wasn't always about being in the main role and that's not what all his memories were. He loved being in the chorus, working in small groups. Um, I think it brought each of them leadership, um, social skills, uh, small group skills, and great friendships. So I think in my childhood, it has great memories as well as my children as well. Thank you, Trish. Nick, you are on. All right. Thank you all for hosting us tonight. My name is Nick Allen. My first experience with the arts as a student came as the mean uncle in Madam Butterfly, um, mostly because I was the tallest kid in class. Um, so I could stand up the tallest and look the meanest, I think. Uh, but I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, made friends uh, in high school. I took computer animation, which was one of my favorite classes with uh, Johnny O'Lonegren, a uh, great teacher down there, and uh, digital photography. When I was thinking about this, you know, I, I thought a lot about, you know, my experience as a teacher too, and just how important it is for students to find that place where they feel connected. Uh, for me, that was more of the sports arena, um, which bummed me out because I love musicals and I was never able to be part of the musicals, but I definitely watched all my friends at them. And as a teacher, just, you know, sometimes you have a student that might be a little difficult and you're trying to connect with them. And I remember Devin and I went to Devin's play. They did Into the Woods and he was amazing, amazing. And he was the, the lead actor or singer what have you and after he came up it's like Mr. Allen you came and I was like yeah of course man and then that just cemented our relationship and seeing Devin just excel and do something that he is so passionate about and supporting it uh, really brought it back to the classroom uh, and solidified our relationship so when I think of the arts I really think about that connection I think about students that can be themselves like David said and really try and at the same time be part of a community, um, be connected with other kids. And we talk about you know mental health a lot, and especially in this district. And arts has a great way of just connecting to yourself and giving you the ability to learn more about you 
And that's why I want to make sure that we keep the funding available for those programs because it makes a huge difference uh, for the student personally, as well as academically. So for me, the arts was a great thing. Uh, I still do it to this day. Uh, that I made that over there. Uh, it's um, an acrylic pour. Uh, so that's, that's where my art skills come out today, but uh, it's a lot of fun and I'm, I'm very excited to uh, make sure that students have those opportunities. Thanks, Nick. All right, on to our second question. There is a term in the arts community and education called arts integration. In acknowledging students' different learning styles, education with arts integration has students demonstrate understanding through an art form, no matter the subject. Examples include creating plays for a history lesson, commercial jingles to teach persuasive writing, or narrating creative stories through photographs. What role do you see for the arts in the education of a D51 student? And again, that question is, what role do you see for the arts in the education of a D51 student? And Austin, you are up first for this one this time. Well, that's a really good question. And I think that what we're doing now is working. Um, if we can keep art integration and keep doing, you know, for example, in high school, I had several teachers, you know, create a jingle for this, for, you know, such and such issue or topic or, you know, and, you know, I, I think that's really great because it, it keeps the kids engaged and it, and it uses different parts of the brain. Um, the other thing I could see the district doing a little bit more of is, for example, like history or, you know, whatever class you may have, drawing. Um, I, I, you know, in middle school, that kept me engaged. You know, when a teacher would be like, draw this out or draw that out, and it was related to the topic, I think that absolutely kept the kids engaged. And it kept me engaged, for one. And it, and it definitely, you know, it's interesting because, again, not every kid is on the same level of artistic ability or, you know, singing ability or what have you. But it keeps them engaged and it brings people together on a project. Um, for example, when I was in high school, I, we had to create some random project that, that has never been created before. And honestly, that was, you know, I made a lot of new friends off of that because we learned all how to draw. They taught us how to draw and they taught us how to color, you know, with certain, uh, certain things and, you know, and, and it, everybody had a different role and I think it created a unique culture of, um, of learning within this little environment. And so I think not only do we keep it in the classrooms as art integration, I think we need to keep it because it creates culture and it creates a little community within the, the community. Thank you, Austin. Andrea, you're next. Well, great question. So I actually have a lot of experience with this. Um, so my kids, when they were in elementary school, actually went to Juniper Ridge Community School, and their whole platform is bringing this art expression through all of the subjects, um, even math and reading. And so, um, so you should see some of the books that they did. Um, they're very, very artistic for all of their um, for their subjects. And so this is a really great way to channel a child's creativity that also ex gets them more engaged into the learning process. Um, obviously in high school that can translate into opportunities where if they wanted to go into marketing, um, like you said, with doing commercials or um, doing different kinds of presentations that we could channel this into uh, the areas where, where kids are interested maybe in pursuing um, after, after high school. Um, I think this is a great way for the brain to start using both the left and right sides. Um, so even kids who may not feel they are artistic by being able to draw could actually pleasantly be surprised that they could channel some sort of artistic ability. Cause I think we all have it. I think it's just a matter of finding what your niche is. And so um, I saw this play out amazingly in Juniper Ridge um, because their curriculum is really kind of focused around this, this whole model. And, um, and it's really amazing to see what the students come up with. And so I think there's a lot we can do with this that would one, it would keep students engaged. Um, I think it would um, give them a lot of self-confidence and realizing that they have a lot more abilities than maybe they initially realized. 
Um, and I think it gives them a sense of self-worth and something that they created themselves. And so um, I think the art integration is a huge piece and I would love to see it actually come in more um, into those spaces where we can um, get those kids maybe engaged a little bit more in those subjects where they have a little bit harder time uh, figuring out how they're gonna express themselves. Great, thanks Andrea. Will, you're next. What role do you see the arts in the education of a D51 student? I think it plays a huge role. I mean, what a better way to get our, our kids engaged again. We talk about getting parents involved and kids involved. You know, wouldn't your parent be proud of you writing a jingle or or something you can do from, from home and, you know, getting them involved in it and saying, look, mom, I wrote this. This is what I did. You know, this is how we get our kids to, to express themselves. Um, I mean, I see, you know, we talk about our kids being so bottled up. You know, if, we, if the project that they're having problems with, maybe that's just how they express themselves. They write it out, they put it on a piece of paper, they read it to you, and, and we learn more about our child and more about ourselves. You know, then you bring your parents out and, and you're, you're talking to your parents about it and your parents understand it better. I mean, I think we, we try so much to keep things to ourselves and we get frustrated because our kids keep things bottled up. Well, maybe this is a way for them to you know, come out and live outside the box a little bit and show what's really going on with them. You know, you, show, you see how they really feel. You look at a painting that your child did, and you wonder, you know, wow, that is amazing. And you wonder, what were you thinking about this? And your child tells you what they were feeling at the time they wrote it, or they did it, or they painted it, or drew it. You know, those simple things that, that we miss can come out with that. So arts, you know, it's something that District 51 does need. You know, our, it'll help our teachers, it'll help our students, it'll help our parents, it'll help the administrators. It eases all the tension there and just you know, helps, helps these kids do things a lot better. So it's something that we need to keep around and figure out how to keep it around and, and not just, you know, just toss it aside like we do other things. Thanks, Will. Angela, you're next. Love this question. Um, we do a lot of this in our school as well. Um, a lot of our students, at least they think that they don't have uh, great academic skills, but sometimes when you add some type of art to it, all of a sudden they find out that they can learn chemistry and they can learn uh, math and some of the things that maybe have been a little bit more difficult for them. Um, it really causes them to think about these subjects differently when they get to it's almost like getting into the subject and they get to get in it and experience it in a different way. Uh, really gets them engaged in a way that sometimes they've never been engaged before. Uh, it gives them a sense of accomplishment because they feel that uh, they feel that connection all of a sudden to the subject. And you know, it touches all types of learning. So for the kids that maybe are more an auditory learner, they do a jingle, they do um, videos, that kind of thing, and, and it brings them into it. For the kids that are very visual, sometimes they need to actually physically put it on a poster on the wall and, and draw things out. Um, and then, uh, of course, the kids that are really kinesthetic, they can build things. Um, really, I think it's so important to find alternative ways to get to every student and make sure that they get an opportunity to experience even the subjects that maybe they think they're not so great at. Thanks, Angela. Trish, you're next. Thanks. Um, you know, as a parent of kids who have been in District 51 for many years, I think our teachers do an outstanding job of trying to incorporate the arts. As everyone's been talking, I've been thinking about things I've seen my kids uh, where teachers have integrated art into my kids' classes. I was thinking about um, AP Lit or AP Language where the teacher has them read and develop different forms of art associated with what they're reading. Um, in a physics class, the teacher was having them create contraptions to demonstrate the principles that uh, they were learning about. Um, in foreign language, they talk about Maybe, maybe the teacher hosts a special event where everybody brings some sort of food associated with the culture that they're studying. Um, in math, I was out at Central High School recently and they were sharing, they use their math class to help translate into construction and build things for the stage for the theater production. There's so many avenues that teachers integrate and I think teachers try really hard to do that. At least I've seen that through my kids in their education through District 51. Um, I think it's really important to integrate. Um, I think beyond that, we can bring real life performers to classrooms, uh, whether we're talking about the Grand Junction Symphony or the community concerts of the Grand Valley. 
we have so many local performers who can play a role in making it real for kids that they can have a future in it. And when we recently spoke in the CMU testimonial about raising kids in the arts, I think parents get really nervous, like, can our kids succeed? But when you bring in real life people who are either acting, um, they're playing instruments, they're dancing, whatever it is, I think it's so important for our community to pull that into the school district and make it real for kids. Thank you. Thanks, Trish. Nick, you're next. I know when I taught, it was one of my favorite things to do was to give students that opportunity to do something a little bit different. I loved gallery walks. It got students up. They got to produce something. I was a history teacher, so got to take some moment in history and, and put that on paper, which is always really exciting. And they loved it. I loved it. One of the things that I connect a lot with bringing in a bunch of different subjects into the usual silos of core classes is it, it adds to 21st century skills. And that's kind of a buzzword, but when we think about the jobs that we have, even the jobs that I've had um, as a teacher, as a landscaper, and now working in rural economic development, the amount that I need to be creative um, and go beyond and just, it's not really rudimentary work anymore. We have so many people right now in the workforce that are working from home or are just doing a bunch of small different jobs that take a lot of skill. So making sure that our students have those skills and how they can use those skills in a multitude of factors is huge and it's great for their education. So I think keeping things fun is super important and making sure that people can express themselves and our students can learn a lot from that. Great, thanks Nick. All right, David, what role do you see for the arts and the education of a D51 student? Well, I, I look at arts as somewhat of an equalizer. And what, what I mean by that is it allows a student to expand their educational boundaries. Uh, typically, when we talk uh, K through 12, we're always speaking in terms of where is a student at at this stage of their education or where is a student at at this stage of their education with arts, the, the arts are immeasurable simply because you can have one student who draws, you can have one student who sings, you can have another student who actually plays an instrument. And, and, and they're all judged on those individual acts. I, I believe that the, the arts are the things that provide an opportunity uh, not just for uh, creative expression, but for self-expression. One of the things that we want our students to be is individuals. And there's, there's nothing greater than the arts to bring that out in a student. Uh, and it's simply because, like I was indicating before, you, all of us talked about our experience, our experiences as uh, students in the arts. We all had separate experiences, but none of us downplayed any of the experiences that we had. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, Trish and Andrea in, in terms of what they did with the arts and how the arts affected them. I have, uh, I have four students, uh, four kids who are students. My twins, they, they excelled in pottery. As a matter of fact, we're still eating off dishes that they made at Palisade High School. And, and I think what it also does is it, and because of that, I look at it as bringing a joy to the parent because one of the things that we try to do with a child is what kind of joy do they bring to themselves? And also what kind of joy do they bring to others, especially their parents? Parents are always looking for ways to, 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 they're looking for indicators of success and the arts are probably one of the easiest indicators because uh, we can look at those three silos reading writing and arithmetic and and for the most part you know we know that there there can be a, a student that excels in reading a student that excels in math however when it comes to the arts no matter what they create uh it's a masterpiece it's just like nick is talking about uh, what is beyond him. And I'm kind of looking at that and I'm thinking, well, for Nick, that is a piece of art. 
Okay. And I think that's where the arts come in because, you know, each individual, they look at what they create as an individual work of art. And that's why the arts are so important for students at D51, because we want all students to have some sort of success. And those successes may not come in the three R's. They may come in the, the variety of arts that those students engage in. And so I, I think without the arts, there is no student success or there's limited student success. Thank you, David. All right, question number three. As a community leader, I love this quote. Because schools play a pivotal role in cultivating the next generation of citizens and leaders, it is imperative that we reflect on the fundamental purpose of a well-rounded education. It's easy to think of children as children, but forget that they are an up and coming generation. What do you see as the role of a D51 board member with regards to supporting curriculum beyond the core subjects of reading, writing, math, and the sciences to include an arts education? And we'll start with Andrea. Well, that's a great question. So um, one of the board's primary roles is actually uh, reviewing the curriculum and picking the curriculum. And so I think it's extremely important that we are looking at curriculum that does um, emphasize, you know, the arts, um, theater, music uh, for our students and how that can be integrated. I would love to see um, not just funneling it into where high school, maybe as an elective uh, where, where kids get to choose it, but maybe in a way where um, in middle school or other ways um, in elementary, I know in elementary we get a lot of art, but maybe in middle school where we can integrate that more with students because I think what ends up happening is um, you definitely get kids who are more sports oriented, which that's really great. And then you get kids who are more arts oriented, but then it kind of seems like they just take those paths and then that's the only path that they take. And I think we need to make sure that those stay somewhat interwoven if we if we can um, within the classes. And so I'd love to see whether there's an art aspect like we talked about with the art integration. Um, and it sounds like obviously some of that's happened with uh, Trish and her her boys, but um, I, I guess I would I would definitely want to maintain that or maybe even see more of that because um, I, I think if we get too too focused into one lane, um, it it disservices us as we get older as adults um, because we tend to forget that childhood. Um, delight of being able to do art and try things and take risks. And the older we get, we want to seem cooler that we have it all together. And we tend to get away from the things that we don't feel that we're good at. And, um, and I think art and music and theater are those kinds of things that are really important uh, for me. For me in college, I actually took a speech class and my professor told me, you need to go take a dance class. And I said, why in the world are you telling me to go take a dance class? And he goes, you are standing up at the class all like you know, super rigid. And he goes, you've got to, you've got to know. Um, and this was a lot of forethought thought on his part was that you need to go and do some dance to open yourself up so that when you're in front of people, you're a lot more engaging. And so doing dance actually helped me in my public speaking. And I would have never put the two together. And so I think there's some of those connections that we need to make sure that we're having. So why wouldn't a speech and debate student maybe think about doing some dance in theater. I know, and it really stretched me. I, I mean, by this point, I'm like 19 or 20 in college. And so honestly, that propelled me later on in life. And I ended up doing Toastmasters and doing a lot more uh, things because there was one teacher who saw the integration between public speaking and, um, and an art ability. And so I would love to see that in our curriculums. And I think it's very important. Thanks, Andrea. Will, you're next. That's a great question. Um, I think we, as a board member, we do need to, I mean, as, as, as Andrea said, we need to make sure that we are integrating that into all school systems K through 12. I mean, we have art when we were kids and it was great in elementary and then we get to middle school and it kind of disappears a little bit in high school. By that time, it's, it just disappears. And so, I mean, high school, you kind of have to have one elective, but the kids aren't interested anymore. So we have to make it so it's interesting the whole way through. Um, you know, bringing bring, bring in people to draw for drawings and arts and different bands. And I mean, I, I know I went to my first concert for my son the other night and it was amazing. I mean, it was probably one of the best band concerts I've been to in a long time. And here I am thinking that, you know, oh, he's a seventh grader. It's going to be terrible. But they start playing some old, uh, you know, a lot of the old jazz music and, 
And I was amazed. I loved it. I mean, so I will definitely be attending more of his band concerts. But I mean, we 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 tend to think that band is, you know, you know it's for dweebs or, or it's for nerds or things like that. And, and it shouldn't be like that. I mean, kids, all kids learn at different bases. And we need to show these kids that it's, you know, you can learn many different things and be good at many different things. And you can do anything and you put your mind to it. You know, and we need to show these kids that it's okay to do that. It's okay to be a band guy or it's okay to be an art drawer. Or, you know, some of these kids might be some of the best video game um, entre- entrepreneurs we've ever seen in our history. We never know because we don't give them that chance. So I think we need to figure a way with the system to keep it uh, integrated in and, and make it fun for these kids and, and show them that art is just as important as math and as reading, as, you know, your writing, as your arithmetic, you know, as our social studies. All these things in history, they all integrate, they all tie together. So we need to make sure we show these kids that and keep it that way. Thanks, Will. Angela, you're next. Well, I, I love the quote. And as one of the main responsibilities of the board is curriculum, choices of curriculum. And I love the, I love what Will said about, you know, making sure that we keep it integrated. Um, yes, having separate art classes uh, to, to really expand just that. But I love that idea of really integrating um, different types of art, if you will, into learning virtually every subject that they get it, that they uh, are, that they're taking and that they're learning. Um, I love the idea that when little kids, I mean, if you think about really little kids, they, they have no fear. They, they don't have any ego involved in it. They'll try anything. They will completely go for it. And I think learning that at a really young age will keep them interested and going for maybe the things that they feel a little self-conscious about or whatnot, really helping them um, express themselves and not just keep it separate, really integrating those things within everything that the kids do. I just think it will keep them more engaged. And if they're having a good time, they're learning. Wonderful. Thanks, Angela. Trish, you're next. Hey, Michelle, do you mind rereading that question? I want to make sure oh, yes. I'm specifically. I'm happy to. It's a little bit of a long question. And I'm just going to read the last part. I won't read the quote part. What do you see as the role of a D51 board member with regards to supporting curriculum beyond the core subjects, reading, writing, math, and the scientists, to include an arts education? Thanks. Yeah. Um, I don't think anything in the arts is necessarily mandated right now. And I remember when my younger son uh, was graduating from Grand Junction High School and he was selected as student of the month and he gave advice to the principal. And his advice to the principal was he thought every student should be required uh, to participate in some form of the arts at some point during high school. Um, I think it's so important to have something beyond reading, writing, and arithmetic. Um, Whether somebody, whatever the art is, and you know, we just had um, our first gifted and talented student in District 51 recognized for dance recently, which which was the first that's happened. Um, So whether a student wants to do something as a profession, whether a student wants to study some form of the arts, whether it's actual artwork, whether it's singing, piano, orchestra, uh, theater, they will take this on in life forever. And as we're talking today, I I see that Chuck and uh, Robbie Bro are online as attendees and uh, Dr. Bro is a perfect example of a very well-respected physician in town who sings and acts on stage um, as a community member. And I think about why people do that and why my kids, even though they're studying other things in high school or, or law school, what stays with them. And I think whether people just want an outside hobby, whether they have an actual, um, just an ongoing interest in it an extracurricular activity, and sometimes people just need it to unwind. Uh, My younger son who's studying engineering at CU Boulder and heading to the Army, he comes home and plays piano for hours and gets lost in his own world um, playing piano, and he can have people all around him and he won't even see it. Um, I think whatever we can do to help foster the arts, whether it's continued exhibits like at the Art Center when we feature different artwork from our district, um, whether it's widening, um, inviting the public to come and see phenomenal work by our students. Um, As a parent at Grand Junction High School, every year there was one concert that started the year where they showcased every musical group 
and it was the highlight of the year for the, the auditorium is packed with parents and, and they get a showcase um, at least all the music and choir. Um, I, I just think it's super important. I think it makes kids well-rounded, um, whether it helps them with specific skills in life, but also we need professionals to do this line of work. We need people who are going to become famous singers. We need people who are gonna play in bands. We need actors who are gonna be on TV and on stage. And I think it's really important that we have parents and a district who support the fact that we can see our students doing that in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Trish. Nick, you're next. Yeah, I think for the role on the board that I can play in, in supporting arts curriculum really comes with staffing, for one. Um, making sure we have the teachers to teach it. You know, when cuts come uh, to the classroom, it's usually those extracurriculars that are cut first. And as we've all talked about tonight, how important those are for student development. So making sure why I'm running is a major priority is to make sure that resources stay in the classroom and make sure that we have the teachers for those positions and have the support staff for those teachers. So making sure that we, again, just have the primary focus on having the teachers to teach what they know so students can have small class sizes to interact with those teachers to really learn and express themselves through the arts will be a huge development for us. I know we had some cuts last year in positions and some of those positions were the arts and were extracurricular activities. So making sure, again, as a board member, my priority is to bring those resources to the classroom to make sure we can continue those programs and defend them. Thank you, Nick. David, you're next. I'm gonna have to uh, uh, really go along with Nick on this one. And it's simply because of uh, the, the, the staff that is needed. And the reason why I say that is because you know, we, we have both the, uh, the, the visual arts, the written arts, and also the, the arts that we listen to in terms of uh, uh, song and uh, music. And I believe that in order for those to occur, we have to have individuals in positions to make sure that that happens. I also believe that as a board member, there's some other things that we can do. Um, we can we can look we can actually look outside. We as board members can look outside and look to the community to assist us. Uh, one of the things that we do in uh, one of the organizations that I'm involved with is we have a Martin Luther King Day celebration, and in that we celebrate both the written art and also the uh, the drawing art in terms of we have an essay contest, which is nothing more than, than written art. We also have a poster contest. And the beauty about that is it's for uh, K through 12. And the winner, uh, not only is their work of art displayed, but it's on the back of the coming year's t-shirt. So uh, our winner for 2021, their artwork will be on the back of the t-shirt for our Martin Luther King Day celebration of 2022. And if that doesn't, and, and every year we've had this, we have expanded the numbers both for the written art and the visual art. So I think one of the things that we have to do as board members, yes, we look within. And we also have to look outside because it's just like Trish was saying, there are individuals outside of the district, outside of uh, the workers in the school district that can also enhance. I wanna be that board member that gets not just teachers involved, but also parents and community members involved. Because I, I believe this, and, and we've heard this before, that it takes a village to raise a child. But I, I also believe that it takes a community to educate one. And this is, a, this is the arts are definitely a place where the community can assist in a child's education. Thank you, David. Austin, you're next. So, uh, you know, it's been touched on that the district, the, the board members select the curriculum and review it. But I think we need to expand that curriculum a little bit and not just, you know, the drawing and like 
or the painting, the drawing, the pottery, photography. I think we need to expand it and bring in media. Um, you know, media production, it is a form of art. Um, you know, me creating PowerPoint slides is a form of art. And, and much like David, I think we bring this into, you know, writing. Not only is writing, I mean, everything can be considered a form of art because it's an expressionalism. And I think that as a, as a board member, we need to expand that and, and bring in different variations, media, you know, and expand. And in middle school, you know, they only, they teach the basics of art. And I think that's great. But I think for your upper level students who in art, and even the ones that are interested in trying it, expand that even in middle school. You know, in, in elementary school, they used to bring in somebody who would teach art all day long. And then, you know, in, in middle school, it's just one person and you have to sign up for the class. And, and it's kind of this lengthy process. And I think, it's, and I, I, and I do agree with Trisha's son that in, in middle school, in, in high school, I think everybody should take at least one art class because you, you never know. They could be the next Walt Disney. They could be the next, um, you know, they could be the next Frank Sinatra. A everybody has unique talents. And I think as a board member, we need to select a curriculum that can bring out the best in everybody and, and focus on bringing it to them and meeting these students where they are with their art and expanding where they are. If, if we can expand where they are, we could get their interests and we can, you know, create the who knows what with the next big star. Thank you, Austin. All right, question number four. The Art Heritage Program was created in the 1980s for K through five students after an economic downturn in Western Colorado, commonly known the oil shale bust, and it led to major budget cuts. Today, parent and community volunteers in 25 D51 elementary schools, as well as private schools in the Grand Valley, offer six art units based upon well-known artists. Students learn about an artist's life and times. They view presentations of the artist's work and then create their own art. In order to effectively manage arts education in the 46 schools within the district, would you support a full-time director position for the Arts Heritage Program? And I'm happy to repeat that question at any point in time. Trish, you are up first this time. Thank you. You know, number one, um, I love Art Heritage. I taught Art Heritage at Pomona Elementary when my kids were in school. I, I did not consider myself a good artist, but as a mom, I was able to learn the basic ropes. We go in for a training and Back in the day, I think it was Connie, somebody who, who led the Art Heritage Program, and she did a great job. Mostly it was moms. I think there were a couple of dads to go and teach inside the schools. And what the kids create is amazing. Um, I did not know that we actually did not have a full-time director. I knew we had many volunteers teaching. I actually uh, volunteered to teach it this last year during COVID with one of the parent volunteers. And as a board member, I actually was not allowed back in because it was COVID and they allowed the single volunteer to go in because everything was really strapped down. Um, I think it's really important. I think we should look at money and see how to make that happen. Um, but like I said, I wasn't aware that we did not have a full-time director. So I'm not sure who's teaching the parents that go in to teach. Um, but I'm, I'm a huge supporter of Art Heritage. And if there's something I can do to back back that up and go look at funds and reevaluate that, I would be happy to do that. Thanks, Trish. Nick, you're next. It sounds like a great program and thank you for educating me on it. Uh, I have to say though, my priority starts again with the needs we have right now. Um, I just looked it up right here on my computer, 62 positions right now, classroom positions. Um, we're at mostly special ed, 14 special ed teachers right now that are currently vacant. So we have to start there. Um, everything starts there for me. Everything's on the table to make sure those positions are filled. Once those are filled, I'm happy to continue to explore um, more extra additional supports and activities that we can give students. But for me, it's, it's the first thing's the first thing. So taking care of step one, um, I think there's other ways we can continue to support those programs. We have some fantastic 
foundations here in the Valley. Um, and it sounds like the program is doing well and expanding. And I love to support that. But financially, we have to start where things are empty and that's our classrooms. Thanks, Nick. David, you're next. You, again, I'm following Nick, but only uh, in, in a respect of the, uh, it, it's like, is a glass half empty or is it half full? Uh, we know that there's a lack of educators. Uh, we know that that has to be a priority. But I, I would say this, and it's something that I've said in some of our other forums, that what we have to do is go out and find resources. I, I would venture to say that there are resources that are out there and financial resources for an art heritage director or a, a partial position, uh, one, a partial FTE. I, I think the importance is that there's, there is a need. Uh, and we all know that the need is the need is attainable. We we can get an individual that can fill that role. However, we have to be wise in where our dollars go. Uh, I'm of the position that we should find a full time individual that goes out and searches for funds specifically for programs like these. Uh, that way, our dollars that we know should be earmarked to those teacher vacancies are being spent where they need to be spent initially. Um, I do believe, and we've all said, all of us have indicated how important the arts are to us, how important the arts are to our students. I, and the thing has to be, we have to be able to find those dollars, not only find them, but stretch them. I think that's one of the things that we're we're somewhat we're not necessarily missing, but we're we're not really bringing to the forefront the stretching of the dollars. However, with that being said, we must prioritize. We've all said how important the arts are. We all have indicated how important it is to fill vacancies, but we have to find a middle ground. There are dollars out there. There are dollars that are probably waiting to be spent. Uh, one of the individuals that I work with, uh, uh, he, he asked about the uh, District 51 Foundation. And he says, you know, I got, I know 10 guys that are graduate of D51 schools that uh, would chip in $10,000 each. So that's $100,000 right there. And I mean, there are resources out there. I think we have to think outside of the box where consistently looking at, okay, this is a salary that has to come from within. I would venture to say that we could probably find uh, either an individual or the monies to uh, fund the position of an individual to fill this position without taking away from the lack of teachers that we have. Uh, I just think it's a matter of researching to fill this. And I believe that we can do it. I just don't think, it's just like you said, Michelle, it's been a position that's been out there and uh, it's gone away. And now, and all of us have indicated how important the arts are to our students. And it's just a matter of what we're willing to, in some respects, sacrifice. But I think it's something that uh, we can all do the research and find, and we'll find a way. I think that's the biggest thing, being able to find a way. Thank you, David. Austin, you're next. I absolutely support find, uh, filling this full-time position. Uh, yes, there is a teacher shortage, but there are other ways of funding this, this um, art heritage program. And even if we have to bring in a grant writer to write grants or, you know, again, the D51, but I do think that this should be a full-time position because it is extremely important to teach our kids art history and art heritage. Um, if we can bring this, if we can bring this position in and keep the kids engaged, it, it, it's, it's a priority. I, I think right now that our kids need to be engaged because I, I know personally of a lot of students that are just, they don't do well with sitting behind a, a screen and 
you know, so if we can get them in learning about art heritage and keep them engaged and let them create their own art and let them work at different things and explore different opportunities, I'm all for it. Thanks, Austin. Andrea, you're next. So it's a great question. Um, obviously, it's a little complicated and um, figuring out how to fund this because uh, we do have a substitute and teacher shortage that we um, need people in the classrooms. I think we have an amazing art community here in town that I think we could partner with a lot more. Um, we have amazing artists. We do art on the corner. We do things with the Avalon um, and, and then the art center. And so they obviously, they bring in and highlight different artists in town um, and out of town. And so I think there's ways we could partner. Uh, like we've, like many of the forums we've talked about, it's a matter of um, leaning on our community. And, and again, we have an amazing art community and theater community and music community. And so I think there's ways we could find grants, but again, a grant will, money will eventually run out. And so we need to find some ways where this could be sustainable uh, for long-term. And, and I would love to see a partnership with our art community. Um, the, on the web, the D51 website, it calls for volunteers. I think we need to make this information more readily available. I, I, I'm wondering how many of our community and our parents know that this is available. I'm sure we have some amazing artistic parents that would probably be willing to volunteer their time and, um, and do these things. And so I think from the board standpoint, we need to make sure that this information is out there to parents. Uh, and I would work on really making those connections with our art community uh, to help fulfill this position or some sort of um, uh, hybrid position that we could get this uh, figured out with. So thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Will, you're next. Yes, I definitely think it's a need for it. And uh, I, I would support something like that. But as, as everybody else said, I would definitely want to you know, lean on our community and our parents a little bit, uh, see if we can get some help out there. Um, and I said, we, we do, there's a lot of people around here. We talked about artists and we talked about musicians. We talked about, you know, uh, people that do own art galleries, you know, all these things that we've talked about, we can get some of these folks out to help us out as well. I also think we can, you know, try and figure out maybe an internship or trying to figure out a way to make it so it, it, it works out good benefits, something that could turn into a more permanent position when the funds are available or, you know, when we can, do the things we're supposed to do, but, you know, get somebody who's invested in art, who wants to help out and, 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 and try and create a position for them, you know, just, you know, call it like internship for now, you know, to figure it out, you know, if this is what you want to do and see how they expand the program. But we definitely need to, uh, we definitely need to get out there and support them and, and figure out ways to keep this around. Um, so yes, I highly, highly, highly am in support of it. Thank you, Will. Angela, you're next. Thank you. So, one of the main functions of the board is to uh, look over the budget and to make decisions about where the money is spent, is not spent. So, you know, I think there's there are a lot of things to look at. It's a huge, huge budget. And I think we've got to just start at the at the basis of that and really dig through it and see what money is is going to what programs, where it's being funneled now. And then maybe make some adjustments that make sense. Um, you know, our teachers are such a great resource for that. They, they're the ones that are that are, you know, down in it every day. They're the ones that are that are working with these kids and know they know what they need. And so the first thing that I'd want to make sure is that we're supporting our teachers um, in doing what they do as a whole. Um, you know, really listen to. Uh, leadership and find out if that's going to be something that, like Andrea said, is sustainable. Um, what I would not want to do is put into place a position like that and then not be able to sustain it. Um, especially, I, I mean, I think it would go over so well. I think it would be such a, a great attribute to the entire district. We've just got to make sure that that it makes sense um, financially. And then, you know, once again, finding that community partnership. We have Grand Junction is just such a unique and interesting and well-rounded community. There are so many people that I think, just as Andrea said, if they knew about opportunities to get in there and help in these areas, I think they would be more apt to do that. And, and I think communication is one of the things that we can do better for the district, um, just making sure that people know um, what we need 
and how they can help because I think most people are really giving and, and want to help. So again, I would support it as long as it's sustainable and, and it makes sense financially within the rest of the budget. Great. Thanks, Angela. So those are our four questions. Our evening is almost over. It's gone pretty fast. So it's time for final words. Um, again, you each, we have time for three minutes uh, for everybody to have some, some, some say, something you want to um, expand on your answer or, or whatnot. And uh, we're going to start with Nick for final words. Thank you again so much. This is, uh, I think, our final forum here. Um, and you all was... made it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Good job to everybody. Uh, <laughs> congratulations all. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to speak on a multitude of subjects. The arts, uh, tremendously important, obviously, as described tonight. You know, my big thing is we have some amazing teachers in this district. We have some passionate parents in this district and some really supportive administration and amazing kids. And what I want to do and my goal on the board is to make sure that the resources are in place where the learning happens. And that's the classroom. Again, I already referred to positions that are unfilled right now. Um, we are still below state average for our teacher pay. We are above state average for our administration pay. And that's an imbalance that I think needs to be fixed. We are heading into a teacher crisis in this country. Uh, you can see it across the board. Positions remaining unfilled, uh, people not getting into the profession. So there's gonna be a massive competition and we're already seeing it here. So I wanna make sure as a board member that our priorities lie in the classroom with the students, making sure we support them. That's my passion. Uh, I was a student with dyslexia, so I needed those extra supports. I needed that special ed department there to support me and, and help me get to where I am today, graduating college and being a professional now. And I see students missing out on that future. That's what spurred me to run. That's what I'm setting out to fix to make sure that we have a teacher in every classroom, that we have support for every student. And finally, that comes from being a board member who will go out to the community and listen. All three things that I wanna to touch on and make sure happen in my tenure. Uh, we have 12 days left to vote. Uh, we have, from what I heard last, about 10,000 ballots have been turned in. So please make sure there's plenty of Dropbox across the, uh, the valley. Turn in that ballot, get your sticker, uh, thank you all for being a voter and, and tuning into this today. I hope to serve you on the school board as District D member. My name is Nick Allen, and you can check out my website, nickford51.com. Thank you again for tonight. Thank you, Nick. Austin, you're next. So thank you guys very much for having me, first and foremost. Um, a, a little bit about, about what I want to expand on is obviously... Um, expanding the budget for these programs. I know of several programs, um, namely Central High School Theater. They do an agathon and they do several um, fundraisers throughout the year, and that's how they fund their entire program. Without these, they wouldn't have a theater program, they wouldn't have a drama department, and that is unacceptable. My brother lives for these programs. He lives for theater. He comes home every day, and that is his talking point all afternoon, all evening long as theater. And I think that as a district, we can do better. We can absolutely do better. And we can partner with these, with the community agencies in the arts and community areas. And we can fund these programs because uh, like my brother, there are tons of students who go for these programs. You know, I, I know that the Central Theater has kept several students in high school because of the teacher and the, the culture, you know, and, and it is in an amazing group. Um, I, I think that we can also do better in supporting our music programs um, and supporting these programs. You know, as a board member, I would go out to these different events and support and listen to them and, you know, and be at these events and show them that they have a board member that is engaged and wants to be there. Um, again, thank you guys very much for having me. Um, I'm Austin DeWitt for District C and uh, have a great night, guys.
Thanks, Austin. Andrea, you're next. Well, thank you everybody for having us. Uh, thank you, Michelle and Mesa County Libraries and all the other uh, uh, hosts. And thank you everybody for attending. So, um, you know, I, I'm stepping up to run because I, I'm a mom and I have kids in the district and I'm very concerned about where we're headed. Uh, we can't keep doing the same old, same old and expect different results. Um, we do have a teacher shortage. We have a substitute shortage. We have teachers right now taking their planning time um, to substitute teach. And so that takes away from their planning time, which takes away from uh, what they can do in the classroom. And so we really need to look at what we can do to make sure that one, not only District 51, but just, um, just our, our school system in general is going to continue to uh, move forward and, and not just move forward, but I would really like to see it thrive. Um, I'd love for Mesa County to set the standard for the state and that we, um, we're just an amazing school district to be a part of. And so um, I see doing that in a lot of different ways as far as partnering with our teachers, our community members, uh, listening to our parents, um, and, and, uh, and making sure that we're putting all of these pieces together. It seems like, um, especially through going out throughout this process of campaigning, um, we have some parts that are connected, but it seems like more and more there's a a lot of disconnect between things that are happening, like what the parents know about and what the teachers are doing and what the community is doing. And we need to make sure that we have somebody who's a great connector um, and really that the board can be a good connector and working with the superintendent to make sure that we can really streamline uh, these things uh, for the benefit of our students and our teachers and our community. Um, it's really important to me that we make sure that we're keeping parents um, involved in the process um, and that that can kind of maybe lower some of the tension that we've seen um, as of late. Um, I think a, a lot of it just comes to a matter of listening um, and, and, and we need to be able to do that in a lot of different ways, you know, at our board our board meetings, um, getting out and into the schools uh, like Harry Butler did, uh, where we're interacting with the students and the teachers and the staff. Uh, our, the, we should be going out to the community as board members and not just expecting the community to always come to us um, and to be seen a lot more. Um, I, was I was very involved at Juniper Ridge. We went to, uh, the, the school was really great about keeping us board members apprised of the different events um, that the school was doing, whether they were on campus or off campus. I know COVID changed a lot of that. And so um, I, I appreciate the board is getting back to a lot of those things now. Uh, but it's we have a lot of, of, of room um, that we or excuse me, a lot of areas that we need to make up because we lost a lot of time with that. And so I, I am, I'm just a, a mom that's willing to put my money where my mouth is and step up and, uh, and, and serve. And so I'm um, going to be vested into the school system for a long time because my youngest is five. Uh, and so I, I really want to see um, our school system here uh, just be spectacular. Again, my name is Andrea Heights and I'm running for District C. Uh, get out there and vote. And um, if what I said resonates with you, I'd appreciate your vote. Thanks, everybody, and have a great night. Thanks, Andrea. David, you're next. Again, I want to uh, first uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to be involved in this. I think one of the things that we continually lose sight on is the uh, the importance of the arts in education. Uh, a lot of students would feel left out without the arts. And uh, I know what it's like to feel left out. I've experienced that. And as a uh, board of education member, I want to be able to, to bring all students into the D51 fold. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about where we see the district headed. Uh, I'm of the mindset that we do have great teachers. We do have great administrators. And above all, we have great students. But in order to, to continue that, we must have great leadership. Uh, I believe I'm the candidate in District E to continue that great leadership. Um, I've been involved in the community for the last 35 years, bringing community together. I think what we have, even inside the district, is some fracturing. But with that being said, uh, it, we're like a family, and uh, families argue. Uh, but at the end of the day, they do make up, they hug, and they move on with, with family. 
I believe that we have a district that is on the cusp of greatness. And the reason why I say that, you look at what we did during COVID. Uh, I happen to be in Minneapolis right now. Uh, my brother and his wife are both teachers uh, and they did distance learning. And they talked to me about what our district did in uh, Colorado. And I, I shared with them that we have a student body of 22,000 students. And for the most part, we had in-person learning. Uh, we listened to the experts, we took their advice. Our parents listened to the experts also and took their advice. I, I think that's what it takes to continue the greatness of our district. We always look at the arts and we, and we, we typically separate the arts from education. Uh, we're continually pushing reading, writing and arithmetic. However, with that being said, they're, they're, if we're preparing our students for life after high school, we have to prepare them for events after high school, for experiences after high school. And, and some, of those in, some of those events include the arts. I think the arts play a major role in a student's education. Um, I'm David Combs, I'm running for District E, and please come out and vote. Thank you, David. Angela, you're next. So thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Um, I know it's kind of late and this is our last forum. Uh, it's been really fantastic. Um, the different types of forums that we've done, the different questions that we've gotten. And, you know, a great education makes, makes you believe in yourself. It opens up your future and sets you on the path to success and a happy life. And here in District 51, I believe we've got some work to do, uh, yet we've got to get our academics up. It's hugely important. Um, and with that said, I think the arts play a huge, huge part in being able to reach all kids, all of our students, and help them to grow and thrive in the ways that they need to to continue into their adult life. Um, as a business owner here in District 51 and having a, a particular business that has uh, enjoyed many of our students coming straight out of District 51, I really get a chance to dive in and see what it is that um, maybe they were missing. Um, and address some different ways that they can grow and succeed into their careers. So I really wanna make sure that we're talking to students, we're connecting with them and making sure we find out what works for them and what wants, what they want. Um, really connecting with our teachers. So many of them want so much for their kids and they're willing to literally do anything for them to get a great education. So I really wanna tap into those teachers and bringing into you know, the community at large. I think we, I hear a lot from grandparents that want to be more involved. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, we have a lot of parents that, that are ready to be involved and maybe after COVID and, and time online, they're even more motivated to get out there and become more involved in their, in their kids' schooling. Um, and again, the community at large, bringing in people in our community that have talents and abilities that they can share with our students. So as your representative for school board and district E, these are all of the things I'd like to bring together to increase uh, our student outcomes and really turn our district into something that the entire community can be very proud of. So thank you for the opportunity. And it's so important that everybody does get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Will, you're next. Thank you very much for tonight. Uh, this has probably been one of my favorite forums that we've done in quite some time. Of um, course. It, yeah, it, was, it was great. So November 2nd is coming up and, and that's an important date. And what is that? That's voting day. Uh, so, and I'm asking for District D that you vote for me, Will Jones. And why would you want to do that? Because I'm a father. I'm a man, I am, I'm a great man. I, I've been a mentor for your children. I'm a coach. I've dealt with uh, your children for many years now, over 20 something years of coaching in the Valley, uh, uh, of being a, being a person here for 
probably 25, 26 years. Uh, so, and I love, I love, you know, what I do. Um, I'm invested with our children. I know what our children need. I know, you know, they talk to me. I know what our students need. Um, I, I think that we talk about the arts and how, how it plays a part. Art is a very, very important part of what we do. Um, you know, it teaches our kids to express themselves, whether it be through songs, teaches it through music, whether it be through uh, playing an instrument, whether it be through drawing a picture or just simple drawing, taking time uh, or writing a poem. Now, uh, these, these things are very important to our children. We need to make sure that these things stay around. Um, our teachers, we need to support our teachers. Uh, our teachers, you know, they, they, they're, they're just as important. They're, they're not the experts. Our, our, our parents are the experts, but our teachers are right there with them. And we need to make sure everybody feels supported. We need to make sure that we take care of the, the people that, that, you know, that take care of our kids. Um, we trust with so much. And we need to show these teachers that we do trust them. We do appreciate them. We do, you know, care about what happens to them. So we need to make sure that, you know, everybody supported in our, our education system is better. Um, I, I think that, you know, our education is good, but it'll always be better. Always. We always have room to expand. And uh, as we as we say in football, you know, you, you got to you got to pay to play. You know, we have to get out there and, and, you know, and show our teachers and our kids that their education is important to us. We need our kids to know that there are our futures. They're going to be our leaders when we're gone from this earth. They're around. They're going to be what's around. And we want their education to be just as important now as it is then and to them to tell their kids the same thing. So and like I said, as, as you're going to vote November 2nd, just remember, you know, uh, Will Jones in District D. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Trish, you're next. Thank you. Um, well, I'm going to try to stay on topic as it relates to the arts and culture, because I think that's what this forum is about. I think it's amazing to have seven of us here who all have some kind of background or connection with uh, something that made us happy that relates to the arts and culture. Um, I think, you know, David off, often talks about the fact that his daughter's a, a teacher in the school district and she can hardly get parents to be there for parent teacher conferences. But when you schedule a first grade choir, you're gonna have every mom and dad out there because they are so stinking proud of watching their kid perform. So I find it amazing that we can draw out every parent for a, 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 an elementary school concert and we can't get them there for parent-teacher conference. And that's what tells me how important uh, the arts and culture are. Um, I wanna thank the teachers who make that integration happen into the school right now. You could probably go through any classroom uh, right now and find a way that a teacher integrates art into their uh, respective um, topics of what they teach. I want to thank the parents who go volunteer in all the art and cultural programs that exist in the school um, because there are so many parent volunteers who've done that. I've done that from the time my kids were little kids in elementary school teaching art heritage. Um, I also want to thank the community members who set great examples of people who either, who either went into the profession as a professional person in the arts or somebody like Dr. Bro, who is has an entirely different profession and demonstrates um, his interest in the arts, which I think is so important as a role model for the community. Um, I think when we talk about why are the arts important, I'm inspired by it because I'm a mom who got raised with music in my background. Um, I raised my kids with music and the arts in their background. As a prosecutor who day to day sees kids who have been harmed in society, who have um, encountered some sort of trauma or have had behavioral issues that result in them being in the criminal justice system, art can fill a role for these kids. No matter what, what issue they have in life, and art can take them to something that's gonna make their parents smile, that's going to make them feel proud and have some success in the schools. I talk a lot about the fact that when kids enter school, we need to have kids ready to learn. Number one, kids need to feel welcome at school, kids need to feel safe at home, and kids need a positive role model in their lives. That's what the arts can do for kids. The arts can draw kids to come to school, the arts can engage kids uh, with their teachers and the teachers who uh, serve in a role teaching, whatever kind of art it is to them, 
um, can be the positive role models that the, these kids need. I was sort of chuckling as we're winding up and we're all kind of cheering this is our last one and it happens to be a topic that makes, makes everybody really happy. As we went through Grand Junction High School, a school that needs replacing and is dilapidated, my favorite part of the tour was wandering through a classroom with little tennis shoes hanging from the ceiling and I got up on a chair to see why we had tennis shoes hanging from the ceiling and they were art projects that the kids had done and they were so realistic. I literally had to get up to see if they were real tennis shoes or not and, and they were not. They were beautiful art projects. I think about the dilapidated school at Grand Junction High School and I smile because one of my, my younger sons, probably one of his favorite memories is a high school teacher who allowed him and a friend to draw on a ceiling tile because the ceiling's falling down. So she's allowed each of the kids to take something home and create a piece of art. And he and his friend drew a Godzilla thing. And that will be one of the things he will always remember about his high school days. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the arts. Um, I support whatever we can do to integrate it. And I uh, thank all the people who have played that role. My name's Trish Meir, and I hope that you will get out to vote and support me in the election. Thank you. Wonderful. So tonight's session is recorded and we will have it out on social media, hopefully by tomorrow through all the partners that were involved tonight. So we'll get the word out and, and share this more widely um, even than tonight's participants. But I wanna thank you each for attending and thank you for your willingness to serve our community. This is really important work. Also for those who attended tonight's session and our partners, Grand Valley Creative Alliance, the Art Center, Avalon Theater Foundation, Grand Junction Symphony Orchestra, and the Museum of Colorado. With that, thank you all again, and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank everybody. You Bye. Michelle! <laughs> You're going to get stuck, David. I know. Well, I was the last one.